Hello there, everybody. So today we're going to be doing our very first JavaScript Chrome extension uh, video here. I'm just going to show you a very basic Chrome extension, uh, starting at the beginning, how to install it, very basic code and all that, and we'll go from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is jump into the code here. So with all JavaScript uh, Chrome extensions, you're going to want what's called a manifest and that's going to be in .json. So this is basically kind of like the instructions for your extension. Uh, it's where you can put all your settings and whatnot, uh, you know, personal information that you need for the extension, version number, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to go kind of line by line here, just showing you the very first file you're going to need to create. So in the manifest, I uh, just put in in brackets here. Uh, braces, I think they're actually called. So the first line I got here is just manifest underscore version uh, 2. Uh, you're always going to put 2 as of right now. Uh, 1 was discontinued back in, I think, 2014, if I'm correct. And then we're going to do name. You know, what do we want to name this extension? So I'm just going to call this Facebook Filler. Next one is our description. And once again, I'm just going to go ahead and use Facebook filler. These two lines, you know, put whatever you want. Uh, homepage URL, uh, I'm just putting Facebook uh, so I can get to that website faster. If you're developing this for, you know, a company or something, you just put your company's website there, wherever your home is for this Chrome extension. Uh, the next line we got is going to be your version number. Everybody kind of has their own way of doing versions. Um, I usually do, you know, if you just want to do version 1, 2, 3, you can do that. Or if you want to do like 1.5 or 1.52 or 3, you can do it. Whatever kind of format is going to work best for you is good to go. I usually just stick with the uh, 1 point, you know, and whatever. The browser actions. These are going to kind of be some of your settings here. So I'm starting out with just a few very basic ones. Uh, the default title, that's what the viewer is actually going to be able to see, the user on their side. So I'm just saying click me. Once again, can be whatever you want. Default pop-up, uh, that's going to be index.html. You should always do this in HTML. And that's just basically referencing this file here, which is in all HTML. And you'll see what that is here in a little bit. Default icon, that's just going to be your program's icon, icon.png. Uh, I just grabbed the icon for my channel, and I'm using that. And I got that just stored into the folder, which we'll also look at here in a minute. Permissions, I'm not really going to go through these because there's like a crap load. I mean, there's like a hundred, I think, maybe. There's just a whole bunch, but you can do a lot of cool things here where uh, maybe your extension only works on a certain website. So I could have made this so it's only ever going to function on Facebook or multiple websites or, you know, whatnot. So what I have here is just two versions of websites that pop up with asterisks in them. And that's just basically wildcard saying that I, I'm okay with this extension running on any website. That I come across. Once again, I could have changed, you know, this to Facebook.com or something. So there's a lot of stuff here that you know you kind of can explore a little bit more than what I'm showing you. Adjust to what you want. You know, have some fun with that. But this is the first uh, file you should do. To make sure when you're done and you save it, it's saved as uh, the name and then .json. And you're just gonna put that in a folder like I have here. But always make sure you put these in a folder. You don't want to just put them on your desktop by themselves. Uh, with, and you'll see here why in a little bit. Just make sure you're putting everything in one spot inside of a folder. So up here, the default pop-up, it's referencing that index.html. And that's this file here. So in this file, you're going to code it into HTML. Um, I'll do a video a little bit later probably going into more HTML stuff because I haven't done one yet. Uh, but basically, you know, I got like all that kind of stuff here. 
uh, right here in the body, I have the height and the width of the pop-up that I'm going to show you here shortly. Once again, you can just uh, adjust those to what you need them to be. But height 100, width 200, works fine for me for now. What do you want your header to be called? In these brackets, I'm just going to name it Phil Facebook. This is just kind of like the title of that pop-up, whatever you want it to be. Uh, I added a button. Uh, the ID is Phil Form, and the text on there is just also Phil Form. So when I push this uh, action here, this button, I want it to perform or run this and find action.jc. And that basically is saying now reference this next uh, file. Uh, with this, make sure you do save it as a .html also. So click that button. It's going to look for this action.js, which is right here. So this is basically kind of watching for that button to be clicked. It's going to say, okay, when that button is clicked, what should I do? And that's just going to call upon a file, the interjector.js, which is this next file we're going to look at. And this is just a event listener that's watching for that click to be performed. And um, it's also doing the get element by fill form, which is that ID right there. So click that. It's then going to look for this, which is right here. Now here's where the magic happens. Here's where we're going to fill out a form on the website. So I'm just using Facebook as an example. So we're going to start off with document dot get element by id and then whatever that id is if you don't know how to get the id you can just go to the website right click on the uh, field that you're looking for push inspect or control shift j and it's going to highlight the part that you're supposed to be looking at you're just looking for that id which is right there id equals email and as you see, I have email there. I went ahead and got the uh, password one, which is this pass. So down here, uh, you're just going to put whatever your value you want it to be. So I just made up an email, testman at thatplace.com. And then here I just put my password. Obviously, you're going to adjust these to whatever you need. And you can add as many as you need. You know, if you have a form that's 20 fields long, go ahead and make 20 rows of these. I just need the two, though, for now. Uh, that's pretty much it with filling. Now, if you wanted to grab the info for some reason, I just added this real quick to show you also. So, I'm going to create a variable. I'm just calling it this, checkbox. Don't know why I chose that name, but it works. Equals, and then document dot get element by ID. That ID that we have that's up here also, dot value. And that's just saying, read this ID field, get the value, and save it as this variable. And then just so we can view it, I just put an alert there with that variable in it so that we can see what it is. Uh, once again, just save that as whatever you want to call it, .js. The way it's uh, recognized as JavaScript. That's pretty much it for the code for your first uh, Chrome extension that you're going to be making. So now let's go ahead and uh, upload it to Chrome. So the first thing I'm going to do is over here we got these three little dots here. I'm going to click that, go to More Tools, go to Extensions. Now normally this will be your view. Right up here where it says Developer Mode, you want to click that little slider. You're going to get these three new things right here. You're looking for Load Unpacked. I'm going to bring this up. So I had that on my desktop. Here's the Chrome extension uh, folder that I created with all my files in it. As you see, it doesn't see them. That's because we're not going to upload each file. We want to upload them all, so we're selecting that folder there. Select folder. Depending on your script, you know, that was pretty much instant. But it can take, a you know, 30 seconds if it's like a really complex one or whatnot. Just wait for it to uh, populate here. Now that it's installed, we're good to go. Uh, right here, got my extensions, but I don't see that one. I'm just going to click the little puzzle piece. And there's my Facebook filler. And as you can see, there's that icon. Probably should have used a better icon because as you see, these display as very small icons. So 
keep that in mind whenever you're creating like a custom icon. I'm going to go ahead and pin this so that it's just up there at all times. So there's two things I can do here. I can right click on it, click Facebook filler. And that's going to take me straight to Facebook. And that was uh, back here where that is, the homepage URL for Facebook.com. Now that I'm here, I'm going to left click. And that is displaying Facebook or fill Facebook and that little button. And that's basically referencing this uh, file here, the index.html. So there's my header, as you see. And then there's that button right there. Let's take a look at that again. There you go. And that's, you know, that 200 by 100 field. Adjust this however big you want. You know, I could have made this smaller, centered stuff a little better. That's just a simple, you know, first time script thing. I'm going to go ahead and push fill form. So I got that pop up where it grabbed the variable. There it is. So just a way to get an alert if I want to pull a variable. And there it just auto filled both the username and the password from this page right here. And there is that alert there just showing me what was actually in that field. So that's pretty much it for that, for creating your first extension. A few notes uh, to add to this is if maybe you're someone who's already been messing around with JavaScript and you're just making a Chrome extension for the first time, Chrome is very well known for its security. So a lot of things that you might know how to do in JavaScript does not mean that they're going to work as a Chrome extension because of their security. Uh, a great example of that, which is kind of disappointing, is that variable that I called upon in here and had to display as an alert. You know, if I wanted to make this go to my clipboard, unfortunately, Chrome is very strict on what can go to the clipboard without user input, meaning, you know, someone manually actually pushes like Control C or right clicks, copy. You know, that's a user confirming they want to do that. But unfortunately, Chrome doesn't really like it, that kind of stuff being automated. So if you ever have code that you know has worked elsewhere but does not work in your extension, there's a good chance that's the reason why. It's just the permissions of Chrome, they're pretty strict. You know, that's why it's considered one of the safest browsers is they don't allow a lot of automation and stuff with that. So I definitely plan to do some more videos with Chrome extensions as my main focus when it comes to JavaScript. My channel is mostly auto hotkeys. Uh, I try to find ways to kind of tie them together. Um, but in this one, this is just kind of a starter video, and I definitely plan to do some more. So hey guys, if you like this one, maybe want to see some more JavaScript, or maybe you're interested in looking at auto hotkey, since that's pretty much my main part of my channel, please subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And, you know, hit that like, notifications, because I'm pretty much uploading two to three videos every week. And, you know, I'd love for you guys to learn something new. All right, guys. Thank you so much. See ya.